Hello everyone. Today our learning target is I can identify the dependent and independent variable um, given a story. So I'm hoping that because of science you've already talked about the dependent and independent um, variables with different experiences or experiments. Today we're going to be talking about it given math problems. The independent variable is usually or many times it will be x or the definitely on the x-axis so it's usually x and it drives the other variable The dependent variable many times is the y and it is being driven or it depends or it depends on the other variable. The independent variable is always the first column if you're making a table. So on a table, the first column. And the dependent variable on a table is the second column. All right, so here's our first word problem. You're buying Girl Scout cookies, because who doesn't like a good cookie? And each box costs $4. What is the independent variable? What is the dependent variable? Um, I'm going to add to this that you're looking for, so what is the total cost? So the total cost here depends on how many cookies you buy. So if we had the equation, um, and you are very good at writing equations, you would write our total cost. <clears throat> we figure that out by doing four times the amount we bought. So here, our the amount we bought makes the cost. The cost depends on how many boxes we buy. So x is the independent and means the number of boxes and y is the dependent and it means total cost. And we didn't have to use um, X and Y like we've talked about in class many times. We could have used T for total cost and B for our number of boxes. But this total cost depends on how many boxes we buy. All right, let's look at the next problem. For every mile you run, you burn 100 calories. So those are our two, our two variables, miles and calories. So you have to think, okay, which one um, does the number of miles you run depend on the calories that you burn, or does the number of calories you burn depend on the number of miles? So I like to write it out. 
whoops, the number of calories We get the number of calories by taking that 100 times the number of miles. So now we can just put in our variables. So if we use C and M, the equation looks like that. So C, the number of calories, is dependent on how many miles we run. So this one would be your dependent and the number of miles or M would be your independent. All right, for this one, you're comparing the speed of a car based on the initial height of the ramp. So how fast does it go based on the initial height? Well, this is a key word right here because the speed is based on the initial height. So if we write it out again, our speed, we get our speed based on the initial height. It's based on the initial height. Um, because we don't have a coefficient, I'm not going to write it as an equation, but the speed depends on the, oh my gosh, the height. So the speed is the dependent height of the ramp is the independent. So you always have to ask that question. Dependent. Um, which depends or which drives the other one? The height drives the speed. Um, the number of miles drives the number of calories. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so in this problem, Marcus designs websites. He creates three different websites each week. So three different each week. And it asks us to create an equation to represent how many websites you can design given the number of weeks. Um, so that's what we have to do. We have to figure out that equation. I'm going to write the equation first. He can do three websites each. Remember each means a multiplication each week to get the total number of websites. So my equation could be T equals 3W. So the independent variable, so how many he can create depends on the number of weeks. So the independent would be the weeks and the dependent would be total number of websites. And then we can make a table out of this. So if this is the weeks, remember the independent is always that first column. So if this is our weeks, and we could just choose some numbers, and this is our total number websites if he had zero weeks if he didn't work at all three times zero would be zero if he worked one week three times one is three so every time he works another week he adds another three websites so if you worked three weeks, three times three is nine. If you worked four weeks, three times four is 12. Every time we're adding a new set of three. In this last one, Priya streams movies through a company that charges her 
$5 of monthly fee. So that's our one-time fee. Plus, that's an important word, remember to annotate, $150 per movie. So we have our five, we have our 150, and then we have our keywords plus and per. Okay, so it says determine the independent dependent variables and write an equation. Well, we're gonna get our total cost. So it says create a table and the equation to find the total cost per month. Well, here she has a one-time only fee of five dollars plus she has to pay one dollar and fifty cents per movie okay so again our t our total cost depends on the number of movies she streams so the independent is the number of movies and our dependent is the total cost Remember, the independent always goes in that first column, and the dependent goes in the second column. So M for movies, you should probably just label it movies, and cost. So if she rents zero movies, or she streams zero movies, she still has that monthly fee. Um, so if you don't watch anything on Disney Plus, you still have to pay that $9 fee. Here it's $5. But then it's $150 for every movie. So if she had one movie, her total cost would be the $5 plus the $150. So the $5 plus the $150 for one movie. And you could put that in there. You could do $5 plus $150. 50 times 1. But the bottom line is every time she rents another movie, her cost is going to go up $1.50. So 650 and then 8 and then 950, etc. So again, you need to just make sure you're asking yourself which is the driving force, which depends on the other.